The Rams gave the Wildcats a bit of a headache last weekend with the trip down south. The vacation was just what the Wildcats needed to recover. That's right. Not much of a statement made by the statesman. The Wildcats crossed the Mississippi to bring home a victory. We'll catch you up to speed on all things ACU football right here, right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to the Ken Collins Show. A lot has happened in the past week. Coach Collins coming off a game in Mississippi just a few days ago, so he won't be here joining us on set. But here with me is ACU sports reporter for the Optimist, Matthew Sloan. Matt, it's good to have you. It's good to be here, Taylor. ACU traveling to San Angelo last week and then turning right around to find themselves in Cleveland, Mississippi just five days later to face powerhouse Delta State. This is not a conference game, but ACU now one and two in conference play have quite the task ahead of them, Matt. That's right. Here's a look at what we have in the Lone Star Conference. We've got Angelo State and West Texas A&M leading conference, both undefeated so far. Angelo, of course, winning their first game in the conference last weekend against ACU 28-23. WT defeating both Kingsville and Tarleton by sizable margins. Close behind WT are Midwestern State and Tarleton State, both with only one loss so far. Then in the middle of the pack, you have Eastern New Mexico, ACU, Texas A&M Kingsville with two losses apiece. Incarnate Word and Texas A&M Commerce stuck in the basement. When well, ACU not officially eliminated from conference play yet, but in order to keep those hopes alive, they will have to win out from this point on. West Texas A&M with a huge target on their back. And if all goes right for ACU, both Midwestern and ACU will beat WT. And if ACU gets a homecoming win over Midwestern, we're close enough to kiss those playoff hopes. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves and look at this week's games. WT plays Tarleton, Midwestern at and Incarnate Word. That won't be a close game. Kingsville meeting up with Commerce in another lopsided matchup. And Angelo State traveling to Eastern New Mexico. And that's it for this week's games. Well, ACU, of course, getting off early this week with a Thursday night's game, so the Cats are not playing today. We'll have that Delta State game in just a little bit, but not before recapping last week's conference game in San Angelo. Stay with us. It's all coming up on the Ken Collins Show. We are back for more of the Ken Collins Show. Last weekend's game against Angelo State didn't quite turn out the way the Cats were hoping. They ran the ball for a disappointing half a yard per rush on average. They weren't able to do anything in the air either. Mitchell Gale getting hammered with seven sacks. We talked to Coach Collins after the game to see what he had to say about the offensive struggles the Cats faced in San Angelo. Coach, tough, tough loss tonight. It came down to essentially miscues and, uh, and errors on the offense. Let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, some of the incomplete passes, some of the missed passes that we had on the offensive side of the ball. Well, the missed passes are just the beginning. We've got, I, I could talk for probably 30 minutes on, uh, you know, things that we weren't sharp on. And, uh, uh, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is, is look in the mirror and, and try to figure out, am I giving our guys the best chance to win? Uh, if it's anything like the past, yes, we're doing we're doing similar things. We're but but we're not getting the results on the field right now. Uh, you know, Mitchell Mitchell missed some throws. Uh, you know, nobody really knew this. He had a he had a he didn't even throw on Thursday because of his his shoulder was so sore. So, uh, and I even asked him at one point, does he want to come out? Because I could tell it was hurting him. But he was like, no, coach, I'm I'm staying in. So. He missed some throws, maybe because of that, probably because of that. But the 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 problem is, we dropped some balls we, we, that we should have caught. We gave up pressure uh, on the offensive line. Uh, now, whether I helped them out enough, that remains to be seen. We'll look at the video on that. But uh, our running backs missed some protections, and and it just it wasn't a very well played game. And. Uh, and that's what's disappointing is we didn't make we didn't make them earn the stops that they got. And we always talk about that. Hey, make them earn it. A good defense, make them earn it. Because if you're facing a good defense and you don't make them earn it, you're not going to win. 
Well, let's talk a little bit more about protection. We talked earlier in the week about how some of the things were being changed around in the offensive line. Uh, how much lack of protection did you see uh, from the offensive line? And, and Mitchell got sacked several times. How much of a contributing factor was that? Well, you know, to find out exactly what happened, we need to look at the video. Things happen so quick. You can ask two different linemen what just happened in the game. And if they hadn't played enough, you may get two different answers. So uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll look at the video, figure out all right, what happened, why it happened, uh, whether it was a guy that was just started freelancing or whether uh, we need to spend more time on a certain, on a certain protection. Well, on the sideline, Coach Doolin was really talking about, you know, guys, we're out here, we got a missed tackle, missed tackle, missed tackle, and, and we were able to sort of bottle up their, their running game, but their passing game was where they really killed us. Blake Hamlin was really able to execute well. Um, talk about a little the defense and, and where you saw uh, the strength and the weaknesses most tonight. You know, I thought we did pretty good against the run. They wore us down a little bit because we, were, we weren't helping on offense uh, because our offense was going three and out, three and out. We got into a rut where – uh, you know, we wouldn't. We were not making plays, so we would we would go three and out. And I mean, your defense is going to get tired, and uh, and and they they've got a pretty good offense. And the Hamblin was Hamblin was good, and we knew if we didn't get pressure on him, uh, he was going to throw and catch. Uh, you know, I don't, the missed tackles. You know, the hardest thing to do in football is tackle a guy in the open field. I mean, it really that's when, when it comes down to it. Uh, obviously, we've got to get better at doing the hardest thing in football, which is tackling in the open field. And uh, uh, I don't know, we'll, and we'll look to see why. Were they out of position? Why were they out of position? Was it their eyes? Was it, was it their feet? And those things are correctable. Uh, you know, the first thing you look at, first thing you look at every week, whether you win or lose, is, is all right, schematically are we doing the right things? Then it's personnel-wise. Uh, uh, personnel, do we have the right people in there? So those are, those are things that we'll have to uh, answer. Morgan Lineberry struggled just a little bit on his field goals and his extra points. Where are we going to have to go from here in order for him to be able to, to kind of get better as for weeks to come? I don't know. We've got to get him in a groove uh, somehow, and I don't know I don't know what the answer is yet on that. And, and, I, and I told those guys in there uh, just now right after the game, I said for me to sit here and make a bunch of statements when I haven't looked and studied the, the video is, is not really fair to anybody. I'm just, I would just be venting, and it would be easy for me to say, well, Morgan, just make the kick, you know. But, but we'll figure out. There, there, if there are reasons, then uh, we'll figure it out. ACU scored a touchdown early in the first quarter, and it looked like the Wildcats were going to run away with another game. But after that, it was all Rams. Angelo scored 21 unanswered points to take a commanding lead into the fourth quarter. That's when the ACU offense started clicking. With a couple of quick scores, ACU narrowed the Rams' lead to five before an ill-fated interception on deflected pass ended the Wildcat rally and sealed their fate. Let's take a look at the game recap. ACU marches down the field on their first possession and punches it into the end zone for an early lead. Demarcus Thompson with a huge first quarter and the first ACU touchdown. Angelo not responding just yet, but they put it away and the Cats take over. Morgan Linebearer field goal no good. ACU up 6-0. Coach Doolin giving the D a little talking to on the sideline while the offense struggles to move the ball down the field. The Cats average only about half a yard per rush. Rams rushing attack gets going in the second quarter. Donovan Roberts on the carry, shedding a few tacklers on his way to pay dirt. 
and an extra point gives Angelo the lead. A sap. And then a dropped pass. And an incompletion later, Mitchell Gale connects with Taylor Gabriel down the field, but it's still not enough to send the Cats into halftime with a lead. The Rams taking the ball to start the second half, but taking no prisoners. They make their way down the field, but Mike Wallace says no sir to Blake Hamlin with a pick. Mitchell Gale taking it into his own hands on a run, but it's still not enough for an ACU first down. getting a little hot-headed here and a 15-yard penalty puts Angelo in great field position. Blake Hamblin doing what it takes on foot to put six more on the board for the Rams, stretching his legs a little bit until they find it home. A little fourth quarter magic is just what the Cats were hoping for and it's what they got. Mitchell Gale passed to Elton Cochran is good and worthy of some celebration for the disheartened Cats. ACU defense able to put the hammer down on the Rams on a few plays, bottling up the run and keeping the ball out of the receiver's hands. But all it takes is a final push downfield and the Rams see the red zone once again. The Cats, on the other hand, see red as Daryl Cantu Harkless does his job on a few plays to take the ball downfield. A pass on the money to Taylor Gabriel puts ACU within five points. When it starts to look up for the Cats, an easy catch bounces right off the top of Travis Tarver's helmet and the Rams take over once again, sealing their first Lone Star Conference win of the season over the Cats, 28 to 23. We just need to, you know, execute our plays more and um, as far as offense and defense, you know, we both, we still have a little parts that we need to correct and, uh, and that's about it. We just need to execute. Last year in the Lone Star Conference, many ACU sports are hungry to finish some unfinished business. But last weekend, many ACU teams came up short of their hoped victories. Here's Brooklyn Golly with a look at some of those stories with the JMC Network Sportscast. Thanks, Taylor. This is the JMC Network Sportscast, and I'm Brooklyn Golly. The Wildcats soccer team clinched a win here at ACU Friday afternoon. During the first 34 minutes of the match, no one had scored. Andrea Carpenter, who had previously been out three games due to her knee surgery, made the first goal. Shortly after, senior Julie Coppage was fouled and knocked the penalty kick past the Eastern New Mexico goalkeeper. The final score was 2-1, giving ACU a victory in the Lone Star Conference. West Texas A&M kept hold on their first place in the Lone Star Conference after battling the Wildcats Sunday afternoon. Julie Coppage had a rebound goal in the 50th minute, assisted by Stephanie Heron. Though there were many close goals, ACU fell to score again. West Texas A&M gained a 3-1 victory, dropping ACU's overall record to 3-5 and a conference record of 1-3. The ACU soccer team will be starting a five-match road trip this Wednesday night at rival Midwestern State. Wildcats volleyball fell to Tarleton State Texans during their home opener Friday night at Moody Coliseum. The Texans won by scores of 26-24, 25-19, and 25-22. ACU's scoring leaders Friday were sophomore Sarah Oxford and freshman Corey Reeder. The Wildcats kept the lead most of the third set, but errors resulted in a 3-0 loss to Tarleton State. 
Angelo State remains undefeated in the Lone Star Conference play after a final 3-0 win over ACU Volleyball Saturday afternoon. The Rambells won by scores of 25-13, 25-13, and 25-17. Senior Kaylin Allen led the team with seven kills and tied with freshman Jenny Lorch for the most points. The Wildcats are overall at 4-8 and 1-3 versus the league. That was Brooke Lee Golly with the JMC Network Sportscast. Keep it here. We'll get to those Delta State highlights and some details right after this. We're back on set for more of the Ken Collum Show, and now joining us to share his sports knowledge is ACU Optimist Sports Editor Edward Isaacs. Edward, welcome. Thank you, Taylor. It's good to be here. And I'm glad you're here. I really am. We talked a little bit earlier about the loss to San Angelo last weekend. A good team, but not necessarily one that we would peg as a powerhouse in the Lone Star Conference. So, Edward, tell us a little bit about what this win in Delta State means to the team at this point. Well, Taylor, I think this win could be a season-defining moment for the Cats. I mean, it's it really is a shot in the arm for them. Um, at this before this game, I mean, the last three games the Cats played, uh, the offense and defense struggled in both of those games, and with the loss, as they. Cats could have easily be two and three instead of three and two, and um, you know with a couple more good games, I think we could be right back at the top of the LSC. And with a loss, you know we could have easily finished up, finish up in the bottom half. I think that you're exactly right, and we could talk about the game all day long. But let's take a look at some of the highlights. On the touchdown catch for ACU. Well, defensively, we were able to perform whenever we needed to. We needed to. The defense was able to sort of come in there early. Mike Wallace with the interception early. Um, I think it was the Delta State first first drive of the game. Tell us a little bit about that, Matt. I know that you were excited about that play. Man, how is Mike Wallace not always on the field? The guy's a ball hawk. You know, he he gets on the field for the first time last week. Two interceptions, two more this week. He's just he's making a bunch of plays. And it's good to see someone in the secondary besides L.B. Suggs really flying around the ball. Well, absolutely, and he didn't stay in every, every play of the game like you just said. Um, what does that say about sort of the resiliency of him kind of being able to come in um, and be all in whenever he wasn't and sort of be able to take a step back whenever he was on the sideline but be a true playmaker on the defensive side of the ball? You know, it's encouraging. He, he may be a little tired. He might need a blow. He wasn't really on the field that much, all of a sudden stepping in, making all those plays. But it's encouraging to see – the more you give him, the more he seems to make plays. And so hopefully we'll see even a little more of him here in the Eastern New Mexico game coming up. Edward, you and I watched the game together last night. Delta State for a while, kind of looking like LSU running that option. Trevor Wooden, the quarterback, really able to execute that well. And he gained a lot of yards on, on those option plays whenever he was able to sort of escape past the defense. What do you have to say about how well the defense responded and how well they might not have responded on some of those plays? Right. Well, Taylor, the defense did come out early and forced two key turnovers early in the game, including uh, an interception on Delta's first right. possession. 
And uh, I think that really set the tone for both the offense and the defense. And then later uh, in the fourth quarter, we had uh, two uh, fourth down stops, which I thought were two of the key plays of the game. And, um, you know, the team just really, the defense really stepped up and showed that um, you, you can stop the option, and I think the key—I think the key to stopping the option is keeping everything in front of you. And they really did a good job of reading the quarterback, and I, th I think that was that was the key to the success. I think so too. And ACU has been doing the defense, at least, has been doing a really good job of sort of able to um, bottle up the running backs in every team that we've played at this point. Um, but last night we saw them able to shut down the passing game, which is which was really exciting. That's something that. Um, has sort of slipped past them a few times at, up until this point. Matt, what do you have to say about the way uh, that we cover the passing game? Well, you've got to be encouraged. I mean, we, we have struggled to cover the pass, obviously, last year and, the, and then a little bit this year. But I think, you know, Wooden's a little inaccurate at times, and, and we knew coming into the game, if you can get them behind the chains, you're going to have a chance to make some plays. And I think he did a good job stopping the run on first and second down. If you can get them on long third down plays, you see, you see a couple interceptions, couple, couple, you know, misplays there, and so I really think if you can keep teams in third and long, it, it eliminates a bunch of their playbook, and, and that's really the key to stopping the passing game going forward. Well, and we talked about Mike Wallace, but let's go on to LB Suggs. I mean, he's a player that is consistent week after week. What do you think about his performance on Thursday? I think he did a good job of reading the quarterback. You know, he he looked at the quarterback and knew whether he was going to um, pass it or hand it off. And um, I mean, stopping the option, I think that's what you have to do. You have to be able to read the quarterback. And we did a good job of containing him and a lot of, and we had to, we forced them to throw on third down. And I don't think he was comfortable with that for most of the night. And I think that was, that we did a good job of that on the defense. And I think that's what was the key to our success. Well, the defense able to contain really well like we've seen them do every other week previous to this game. They, they kept it clean in the second half, only giving up seven points. I mean, what do you have to say about the reliability and the consistency of being able to come out week after week and, and shut down, especially a team as good um, as Delta State? Yeah, Delta State's different because of that option and because of all those assignments. But you see every single second half, ACU's played well. Played well in the Kingsville game, gave us a chance to win played really well in the Tarleton game and actually really secured that victory. And you see again, at the end of the second quarter, a big stand, just like in the Tarleton game. And it's funny how these games kind of look very similar when you look at them. And, and a big fourth down play by Thor here really sets the tone for the second quarter. And it's encouraging to see a defense that, that is intelligent enough to, to make some changes at halftime and really play well. Well, let's move on to the offensive side of the ball. I mean, ACU being able to put up 34 points. We saw a much healthier Mitchell Gale this week when, than we did last week. Uh, he was able to really connect well with his receivers. We also saw guys uh, sort of step up like Demarcus Thompson and Taylor Gabriel, another guy who's just uh, every single week a, a powerhouse. What does a, a healthier Mitchell Gale mean to, mean to this ACU team? Yeah, Taylor, Mitchell really is the engine that keeps this offensive machine going. I mean, we're just not the same team without him. Um, and it's easy to see after last week's game against Angelo State that when he is hurt or he can't perform to his full potential, our offense just it has trouble doing anything. And so I think that was a key for this game was for him to be able to come out and perform and throw up the numbers that he did. And, uh, you know, I think he is the key to our offense, like I said. So that was that was a huge deal for this game. Absolutely, but it doesn't stop at Mitchell Gale. We no. mentioned earlier a little bit. Uh, Demarcus Thompson, he had, I mean, six catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. We saw last week against San Angelo where he kind of had a, a game-changing fumble, and he, we didn't see that inconsistency. We didn't see that weakness. Um, what do you have to say about uh, where you can see him developing as the season goes on? Yeah, you got to love Demarcus Thompson's athleticism. I mean, over 100 yards receiving in that game. He did have the fumble, and everyone remembers the fumble. Um, in San Angelo, but he had over 100 yards in the first half. He's a huge playmaker and, and really maybe the next, the next wide receiver in that great line of wide receivers ACU has had. And so you've got to be excited about him and excited about Shark Kendrick West getting, getting back healthy, uh, picking up blocks, catching balls out of the backfield. Shark Kendrick West maybe goes unnoticed, but he does a lot of things for this ACU offense. And when Shark Kendrick comes back, you don't really think of a running back being a huge deal in pass protection, but Mitchell's a lot cleaner when he's picking up those blitzing linebackers. Well, we've talked about it over and over, but injuries are something that have continued to plague us this year. Uh, we saw Justin Stevens go down, and you really hate to see that, but uh, what do you think right now at this point about the health of, of guys and some of the injuries that are still going to be uh, affecting us as we continue to move on into conference play? 
Well, you know, we're banged up, but you've got to be excited that you've got 11 days off before Eastern New Mexico. Maybe put it on them, get your starters out for the fourth quarter. You could be looking at 17 days for your guys to really rest up and get healthy. So we're really banged up, but in a couple of weeks, maybe we'll be a little more healthy going into a really tough part of the ACU schedule. So it's never a good time to be injured, but this might be the best time to be a little nicked up. Well, we've definitely got a long road ahead of us, but I think that we've pretty much covered all the bases on this uh, game against Delta State. ACU pulls out all the stops to get a 34-28 victory over Delta State. A much-needed win and now some much-needed rest for this ACU team that will get 11 days off until they meet Eastern New Mexico at home a week from today. Thank you for joining us here on the Ken Collum Show. For the Optimist Sports Riders, Matthew Sloan and Edward Isaacs, I'm Taylor Langston. Join us again next week. Thank you.